Hello, I'm in Japan. Um, I've been in Japan, I've been here, well, I will have been here for uh, two weeks. And this video, I'm going to show you what I did. So here is the story of how I survived sketching in Japan for two weeks. That's right, I recently had the joy, the pleasure of going to Japan. Allegedly, it was for my honeymoon, but in fact, it was a two week sketching holiday where I happened to have an entourage, my wife. I packed my sketching supplies and repacked them, then repacked them again until I had a light and transportable selection. I basically wanted this to fit in my bag so that I could take it anywhere and be ready to sketch at the drop of a hat. The biggest win of the whole setup was bringing a simple bit of foam board that exactly fitted my bag, exactly fitted my sketchbook, cost about 30p and was incredibly useful. I've got a video coming up which will tell you way more about that and show you exactly how my setup worked. Anyway, back to the trip. We were all packed up and it was off to the airport. I had enough time to get my first sketch in of the trip. Some plane sort of sitting there on the tarmac below a sunrise. And of course, do a little light reading on the way, finding some magazines with some pretty pictures in. It was our honeymoon, so we had a glass of sparkling wine and I spent two hours making abstract doodle to pass the time. Well, two hours of a 13 hour flight. So it didn't really feel like it passed a lot of time, but I still enjoyed myself. A train journey and a snack, which I sketched, and we arrived in Kyoto. It was busy, so incredibly busy. And I mean both what we were doing, we were walking, we averaged almost 20,000 steps a day, but also the streets were packed, especially where we first set out in Kyoto. Now I had a plan to fill two pages of my sketchbook every day, but on the first day there were a couple of minor roadblocks. What I'd intended to do was go outside this evening. I've not had any sleep for about maybe 25, 30 hours at this point. I've lost lost track because of the time difference. I was going to go outside and, and do some sketching. I stepped outside at 6.30 in Japan's evening and it's very dark. So instead I'm inside doing some little swatching. So just exploring the colours I've brought with me. And along with this, I also took some time to just do some sketching from a photo. I was absolutely obsessed with the amazing wires and telephone poles everywhere on the streets here. Even amongst the busyness though, I did find opportunities to sit, to exist, to relax and to sketch. I replaced my normal coffee, for example, with an obligatory matcha. In a new place, which was so different from home, I found there was always a little view that I could sketch, which was interesting to me. And I really enjoyed capturing a couple of arches one day. Glad for a seat and a table just to make life a bit easier. My next opportunity was at a bench by a temple. I chatted with Tash, said hello to some intrigued tourists and turned a tricky view, a sort of perspective laden street with loads of lanterns into a really fun memory. One thing I found in Japan is that people were really interested in what I was doing. And I mean really interested. In the UK and Europe, occasionally people wander up and say hello, but I can spend two hours painting, drawing and probably have no interactions. Here, it was pretty much guaranteed within five minutes I'd have someone coming over to start a conversation. And usually it was a very lovely Japanese person who spoke no English. And as I speak no Japanese, those conversations were absolutely wonderful. Fascinating, intriguing and confusing. I mentioned the busyness already, but it was a real challenge in many ways. Finding the time to sketch, but also finding a place to sketch. The best views had 400 people. So you didn't necessarily have space or a good view yourself to capture it. However, with my goal of at least two pages, it gave me the motivation on train journeys in the evenings or whenever I spotted an unlikely perch to get my sketchbook out and go for it. And spoiler alert, although not everything went to plan, I did fill my sketchbook and I'll be flicking through it slowly in the near future for a lovely little video and review and catch up on YouTube. I have another video coming out soon as well where I'll talk you through more about how I made time and space for sketching because I learned a few really useful tips out there which I frankly wish I knew a bit earlier. Now onwards we go to Osaka. This was a metropolis unlike anything I'd seen before. Everything totally mad, tall, colourful, digital and exciting. The first sketch I really loved from my holiday was sat having breakfast overlooking this incredible view. I used a continuous line to capture these busy sort of tumbling skyscrapers and then I just applied a really loose wash of colour. I wasn't sure at this point if it was really working or not 
but we had time and I took time to slowly layer up the colours and find my scene. It was at this point I started feeling confident and happy, found my groove, getting used to my sketchbook and my palette and understanding my surroundings a little bit more. And as I said, I loved this sketch. It worked really well for me for what I wanted to achieve to show a little bit of what Osaka was like in my experience. Now, the next thing I absolutely loved about Japan was their obsession with stamps. And I say obsession in the nicest way possible. Honestly, they were everywhere. Train stations had a different themed stamp. There was a themed stamp for Halloween. We stayed with some monks. They had a stamp. Our hotels, random shops, parks, everywhere had a stamp. And now my sketchbook is filled with stamps and I love it. Well, I've got my sketch memory and now I've got a stamp of approval which really places you exactly where you were when you did that sketch. I even bought myself a smiley face stamp which you might well see adorning a few sketches in the near future. A lot of the art was inspirational too. Their woodblock prints, Yukoi, and I'm going to have butchered that pronunciation so sorry, but I found them fascinating. Real simplicity, real elegance, also a willingness to alter things, to warp perspective bravely, to tell a story with little information, to say a lot with the eyes in so many. I've added learning to woodblock print to my list of things to do, but for now I'm content with memories of flicking through giant books for hours. As we moved on from Osaka, we ended up in smaller towns and more rural areas, and the challenges were totally different. But I found myself enjoying abstraction as a way of examining my surroundings. We visited the famous area of Koyasan, filled with tombs, graves, and Jizo-an, which are little statues of guardians protecting the dead, as I understand it. These shapes are not easy to capture, and the scenes, although beautiful, stunning in photos, not easy sketches by any means. At the same time, I found wonderful to abstract these shapes and turn them into a doodle. An even stronger memory for the thought I put into it, as well as a lovely challenge for myself to work through. By now I was feeling confident and happy in my sketching, walking around crowded streets, talking to myself about art, whilst getting the funny looks I'm certain I deserved. I found corners to sit in and sketch creating quick one-line scenes when I could. I started experimenting on my iPad too, until I realised this wasn't helping with my goal of filling my sketchbook, so I put it away. Of course, there was always something that knocks your confidence. We went to a beautiful park, and I sat at a bench facing a stunning view, and I just couldn't capture it. Perhaps I rushed my lines, but I'm not sure. I actually think the loose and abstract lines worked quite well. Perhaps they were too bold. I'm not sure if this is where it went wrong. But... When I applied the colours, they just weren't happening for me. Being outside made it harder, using a water brush made it less predictable, and sometimes you just have an off day. I felt the colours were a bit claggy. I felt they didn't reflect what I wanted them to. Nonetheless, this did make me a bit moody. So I gave myself a pep talk and went back to basics. So, sat at home on another evening, I sketched a simple row of houses, a colourful ice cream, and that is all I needed to cheer myself up again and give me a wonderful memory of Kanazawa. Now we have to talk about the stationery stores in Japan. Seven floors of pens, paper, paint, ink. Ink, more ink, lots of ink, and stamps, and probably even more stamps than ink. And generally a lot of exciting stuff to look around and feel inspired by and want to buy. I did of course acquire myself a few little treats and one significant purchase, which was an exciting fountain pen. Expect to see it unveiled in the very near future. With our last few days left, the weather turned. We had some rain, we had some mist. That meant visiting a modern art installation in Tokyo. And if you're there, there's a series of projects called Team Labs. We went to Team Labs Planets and it was pretty incredible. Some of it was fascinating, some of it weird, some of it I didn't quite get. And one installation made me incredibly seasick for a few hours. There's other forms of art to look at as well. A giant 3D cat, a Godzilla head, a little Furby waving at us from a rooftop. Poor weather notwithstanding, I was still able to capture some fun sketches. This ghostly scene in Nikko, one of my favourites. The mist was rolling in and out for hours. One minute I could see nothing, the next a clear and beautiful day. And I had fun using Moonglow to really capture that misty, moody feel. My photo, though, of one of Japan's most beautiful waterfalls, probably tells the story of our day better than anything else I could say, do or paint. 
And before you know it, it was our last day. I packed in some last minute sketching in a hipster cafe in Harajuku, one of quite a number of cafe sketches from the trip, now I think about it. And next morning, I was filling the final pages stood at the departure gate. The silver lining to getting home was that I've never seen Betty, our dog, so excited. I was going to film her reaction, but her vigorous greeting smashed my camera from my hand and ruined the recording, which is actually a more interesting memory than a silly video. Just like my sketchbook is so much more interesting to me than a series of perfect photos. If you want to see more of my travels, things I've learned from Japan and the amazing experience I found it for me and my sketching, and don't forget to subscribe to see way more videos coming from my travels very soon. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be the first to know.